Greetings my friends and welcome. It's pouring rain outside, so I was thinking, let's have a coffee, lay back, relax and let's talk. Today I'm going to talk about photographing in less popular areas. So what do you think of the farmlands? Do you think they are worthy of landscape photography? Do they provide inspiration? or do they enter into the category of boring landscapes? Are only exotic and extreme landscapes worth photographing anymore? Or should creativity come from within and make us find interest everywhere? Well, I don't always feel like going hiking into the mountains. Sometimes I just like to go out to the farmlands and see what changed since last I was there. On these occasions, I take a step back, relax and enjoy the landscape. During my outings, I can practice technique and composition without feeling the pressure, the urge and the rush to create and photograph something spectacular. I can take my time to take a good look at the trees, flowers, branches, to sit on the shore of the lake and contemplate the reflection in the water. I find it very rewarding to take a nice picture on the farmlands. To find the composition here can be a real challenge but once you do find it, the satisfaction is even greater. I'm going to show you now a selection of images that I took on the farmland surrounding my home. I usually go out with my husband and for our local trips we usually ride bikes because they allow us to go to places where cars would not be allowed and we can stop almost anywhere and we do not rush by small objects. Our solution to carry all our gear, tripods, gimbal, drone is a child trailer. Basically everything fits in and this way our backpacks do not weigh us down. Also we can scout a larger area without getting tired and we can discover new spots. Another plus is that these areas are not nature reserves and we can finally fly our drone. Farmlands might appear mundane and uninteresting with different crop fields alternating. But looking a little bit closer reveals a whole new world, with each plant becoming a possible subject with a whole ecosystem. You just need to focus on the trees and not the forest. The side of these fields are many times flanked by a small assembly of grasses and weeds and the odd white flower. One such collection caught my eyes as the sun was hitting it and the backlit grasses glowed with a shimmer in the golden light. The play of colors between the red leaves in the midground, the greens in the back and the golden glow of the grasses in the immediate foreground are what makes this image. As spring arrived, everything started to turn green. Cultivated lands are often side by side with fallows that have layers of cut and uncut grasses surrounded by hedges and trees, creating different shades of green. That's what caught my eyes here. The morning sun was way over the horizon and the harsher light gave me sharp bokeh balls in the out-of-focus foreground and created the dark contrasting area in the background trees. The area around us has also a few man-made irrigation ponds that became a home for water birds and some function as free beaches during the hot summer days. On a good day, the weather is calm enough to become a mirror for the spectacle in the sky and can also inspire the creation of dreamy art.
On one of our outings, the waking sun painted gold the nature that was awakening from its winter slumber, bearing its old coat from the previous year. The play of colors of the cloudy sky and the gold of the trees is what grabbed my attention. One of the things that I like in photographing the surrounding area is that I can go out almost every day. I don't have to be a weatherman and monitor the forecast all the time. And from time to time I have the opportunity to capture some spectacular cloud formation in the sky. Such an occasion was when the setting sun painted a line of clouds, pink and purple, and the clouds were shaped almost like a tornado. I took two different pictures of the scene. In one of them, the reeds on the right are a bit distracting, but the reflection is perfect. The second has a more balanced foreground, but the wider composition makes the reflection appear smaller and it loses its prominence. I think the best composition here would have been if I went into the lake, but I didn't. Lesson learned. Next time when I go out, I'll make sure to take some wallets with me. My favorite image of the collection is a minimalist shot that I took of the lake. What caught my eyes is the reflection of the green tree trunks in the water and the little red boy floating on the surface. The green and the rosa colors complement each other well and to create a dreamy feel, I blurred the reflections to highlight the rosa boy. Traveling to exotic locations might provide an adrenaline rush and open up new possibilities. Epic landscapes also make finding composition easier than finding something to photograph in an environment that you might consider uninspiring. Going out on the farmlands is also fun and it gets me practice skills and evolve constantly. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out on big trips. I love experiencing myself new places and new landscapes. But the regular practicing of your photographic eye and the muscle memory for your camera will allow you to make even greater pictures next time you are on an epic location. I hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comments below if you like the pictures and if you like going out and photograph the area surrounding your home. Next time I'm going to try out macro photography. See you next time. Bye!